Videos of me out there, my robot isn't nearly as good as that, but uh, we just want to get that through their head that there's gonna be cameras everywhere. And then we try to tell, you know, tell them to learn to tune things out. They're gonna be saying stuff, they're gonna be yelling at you, whatever the case is. You just need to learn to tune that out. This is the right way of doing it. response to that would be. All you have to do is kind of lower your shield a little bit and you don't have to worry about it. He's just trying to get a response. Um, and then I, of course, explain, you know, the entire, you know, Hawaiian Tropic bikini team could be out there protesting. I'm going to get that guy dancing in front of me. Um, <laughs> we also explain them the things that they need to consider. The need, the urgency, and the ability. Is there a need to do something? If a bunch of protesters block an alleyway to a full dumpster and they don't want people throwing garbage out in that dumpster, it's full. Really, is there a need to Okay, you guys, you showed that dumpster who's boss. There's really no need to respond. The urgency, is it important? Are they blocking a road to a hospital? Or are they blocking the front of a firehouse? Or, you know, are they blocking the front of a Chick-fil-A on a Sunday that's closed? It's kind of like one of those things. It kills me. Every Sunday I go to Chick-fil-A thinking I'm going to get something. And then, <laughs> and then the ability. Do we have the ability? If it's 30 officers and 3,000 protesters, probably going to need some more backup. So we're we'll waiting for us to have that ability to do something because we don't want to go out there. And you'll see this next scene here. There's some officers and there's some protesters. The officers get the order to move the protesters back. There's a lot of protesters and only a few officers. And if you notice, they only move those protesters back maybe a foot and a half. Um, so they really might not have the ability to do that. <laughs> So on that one there, like I said, um, we train them a, a, a lot different than that on how to move lines back and they really, um, you saw some of the protesters, I thought it was kind of funny, they, some of the guys were taking some of the ladies and putting them up front, which I thought was probably not the best thing for the protesters. They also wear the backpacks on the front and they've got padding that backpack so if you try to hit them with the baton, it doesn't really affect them, but we've, we've trained the officers on the stuff around that. Uh, a discipline in a mindset, we explain to the officers that they have to have discipline in a specific mindset. They have to put themselves in that happy place. Uh, <laughs> okay, so this lady dressed up like the Joker for uh, the, that protest. I don't really quite understand it. She wanted to get her picture. She got her picture of that, you know, kissing that shield. Um, and again, we explain them. They're just trying to get a, a picture on the news. They want to get a picture of that. Um, we asked some of the officers, what would you do in this situation? And some of them tell me, well, I would probably just stand there if that's what she's trying to get a picture. Okay, fine. Other ones say, well, you know, she's grabbing my shield. Well, yes, yeah, she is grabbing your shield, but she probably weighs 80 pounds soaking wet. And you're a 250-pound guy. You know, she's going to kiss your shield. She's going to walk away. We try to have them have that mindset of, do we need to respond to something or do not need to respond to it? And then again here, these are all these officers in the riot gear and their gas mask. Um, I get this a lot in the neighborhood that I work. I don't know. They tell me I'm number one all the time. Um, I, don't, I don't quite understand that. But they're pepper spraying him. So, you know, this is like, well, why are they pepper spraying him? Was he running toward the officers? Did they feel that their lives are in danger? Um, and then we explain to them, listen, you have to have that mindset, but when it's time to take action, they're going to take action. 
On this one here, you see that they picked up this uh, barricade and they started to throw it at the officer. We explained to the officers, listen, we're not going to get beat up out there. We're, you know, we're not going to go out there and just start beating people up, but we're not going to get ourselves beat up. We're not going to lose control. Discretion and judgment on the world stage, we, we, we kind of really drive that home to them. We tell them to take a look at this and the two different responses by the two different officers. Officer Bubbles, um, he'll come up. Um, there's a video that they made a cartoon. He's standing there, and uh, like Osama bin Laden walks by him, Hitler walks by him. Um, and then I think like Santa Claus starts coming up, and he grabs all the Santa Claus. He's like, "Oh, you're going to jail." Um, you know, we explain that, that guy is, is forever immortalized on the, the World Wide Web now with that whole thing. And I mean, technically, if you want to be technical about it, I guess you could say that being struck with a bubble. Yeah. Okay. I guess if you really had to, but I mean, really, they're both wearing sunglasses. And you saw that one female officer, she was engaged in her conversation. She was just like, what's your name? Oh, my name's a mystery. Okay, you know, I'm going to talk to like, because listen, I'm going to be out there for that many hours. I might as well talk to somebody. <laughs> hey, all right, sure. So, but then the other officer, he obviously, had, and it's funny because he actually says, you're trying to bait the police. Okay, well, it looks like it's working so far. I'm going to start going <laughs> You know? Um, it's also, I... I don't care. I went to Walmart after I saw this video. I bought some bubbles. So during the riot training, we actually I blow bubbles at the guys. But uh, we explained to them what really is an appropriate response. Really, I mean, that lady was just blowing bubbles. Are you having that kind of a day where you're going to try to arrest somebody? And then later on, it showed that she actually did get arrested. Which one is this? Hey, you know, the big story in New York, the city continues to be occupied while speaking protests. That is a huge story. And all week, I wanted to visit the protesters myself, I just haven't had time. So instead, we sent a trustworthy correspondent down to Occupy Wall Street. To give us an incisive and in-depth look of what's been going on. I'm talking about our old friend Trident. The insults. <laughs>
the triangle triangle. <laughs> uh, here's how you can be useful for me, okay? I need you to help me with my jokes. Would you help me? Tell me, sir, what is your call besides protesting the high price of Scooby Snacks? Scooby, <laughs> 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 the government is hiding the cures for cancer. Since when? Since 1940s. Mm -hmm. And uh, he has not 50 different cases that he wrote a book on. Okay. And he cured it by dying. Keep fighting the good fight. I'm sure your parents must be very proud <laughs> that your other siblings aren't here with you. <laughs> He and I will actually be two of the guys that are on bikes downtown. Um, if you guys see us, you need something, give us a holler. I know we all look the same. Um, you see me and I'm in shorts. I'm the guy with the whitest legs. It looks like he's riding a chicken. Um, so, um, but, uh, you know, this is a once in a lifetime experience and that's what we kind of explain to these officers that this is something that's just fantastic for the city. This gives us our chance to show the city exactly, or show the world exactly who we are. And it's something that we're never going to be able to do again and uh, just to enjoy themselves doing it. Anybody have any questions? Okay, thank you.